Hey, hey, my name is Postal, and let us continue with the letter. Hey, hey, history, right. Horror visual novel. The history is interesting in it. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about the place giving him the willies. It gave me willies too, you know. I would have loved to snap at him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossoms in the forefront of my mind. One that has somehow bothered me greatly more than my expression over whiskey and this project of wanting all of it to stop. There has been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. What? You think she stayed there and had a showdown with you know who? Worse. Worse. I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damnuiriti. I have no clue if I read this correctly. Loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago. It does nothing to help me care by frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. Where else do I go to drink? Tuesdays are for karaoke, and Wednesdays uh, improve. Usually it's for guys who did Hilar's games. The, on the one with our drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. If I love a good laugh, stand up comedy is in my thing. And without Kam or Haruna, <clears throat> the Japanese firecracker, or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there is several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! I need you for something! It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. I probably have been kicked out of other places by now. Or worse. If push comes to shove, all he will do is give me an easy smile and a shake of his head, even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him before a couple of times. Wait a second. Now that I think about it, I think I've heard that voice before. Although he never talks to anyone else, else except G. The girls used to be all over too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. Mm. All right, all right. What is it? All right, Mr. Bartender, you are definitely the police officer. Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender! I guess it's good for her that she probably won't remember all of this embarrassing stuff she's doing herself. I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. Nice. <laughs> A wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hope of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because what little sounds I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bottle from a sober man. But that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head, just like uh, I know he would, before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? Are you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one to chat with, I would have gone home or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. <laughs> so, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? Their talk would have interested me, would have kept my attention if I gave a damn. But in my current state I can barely give two thanks about the things going on around me. All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sounds that is the pub. 
And he'll have stayed that way, perhaps even drawn if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a wad of cash on the counter after having too much whiskey counts as tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Look fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck. Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. There is only movement on his face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes, she's clean. And she might be able to help you with your... Uh, predicament. Course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? See, you have a little faith in me, why don't ya? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven! Can't miss me! <laughs> I'm like Shorty over here. What's with that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I move directly behind him and use the top of his head as an armrest. But when he shakes me off, I plop in the seat right next to it. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McAuliffe. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhymes. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. You wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. One moment, he's an absolute dickhead. And then, he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. Okay, I'm not just saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Look, it's a catch too. They both are. No. Hannah is, yeah. But I really cannot, for the love of all things holy, see how they even work out together. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being peck peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. A goo goo bobs up, and I press my cheek against a cool countertop with my eyes shut I just pick up. Eventually cracking one I open just in case they thought I fell asleep I couldn't hold. So Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? 
Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hana's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexy as sin to boot. With that, I have to agree with both statements. Not a private detective, then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Hmm, pants. I take the pants off of... <laughs> ah, here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's more like I've been coherent for as long as I've been right now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave... you what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This will be dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The way for this bird that comes over to both of them is palpable. If feelings can taste, it'd be bitter than that beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking, so thinking doesn't get me far with too much shite in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something... As ocht day! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much! It's as fishy as he is, rotten bloke! Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Before I get an word out, there is hands on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. I really slap his hands away the best I can and send him the fullest look I can master. Take your hands off me, pipsqueak! I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from VRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. And we thought it was some joke or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. When rich snobs give you that face, no wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Just drunk. Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay? <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. And here it is pale. Paler than before at least. I can see the gears turning his head on overtime. On overtime. Suddenly he shows a card in my hand. Look for police department. Ashton Fry. Like me Petros. Okay. On it. His name, Ashton Fry, and his number. But he has second thoughts as he grabs from me and slips into my pocket. <laughs> you're cute, pretty boy. But I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger, or if you see anything suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is! Right, 999. Good. Anyway, I have to run. See you, G. The guy's quick on seat already up and at them as soon as the numbers leave his lips. Watching him as he maneuvers through the crowd of other pub girls is enough to tire me out. Fast as can, he's at the door and throws us a smile. And that's all we get before he's gone just like that. Oi, what about your drink, boy? 
I'll go put it on your tab then. Holmes boy always like that, G? Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. Yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. <laughs> hey, that's a loud sleep better. Uh, the de interior designer was drunk. Uh, once again drank her frustration away at the crowbar. Albeit heavily intoxicated, she was seen chatting with Ashton Frey, a detective inspector working for the LPD about Luke Rice. Before we were leaving, the detective left uh, her his calling card. Hey. Mumbly can sleepy thanks, I doze off on this spot. Face pressed on the counter. Already I dread the pain I'll have for sleeping in such a position. So, if it can kill your hangover, I would not complain, I guess. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh shit, there we go. Oh, Marianne! How long have you been standing there, dearie? Come join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Yes, you will. Unless you ask, that is. She doesn't need to ask. Not that I can get much sleep to begin with. Seriously. Phew, good it was a slow, uh, uh, not a long, you know, not a long nightmare. <laughs> Do people ever have the feeling that they are working on something they really enjoy but still it eventually tires them out? Yes, because honestly I've been feeling like this. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous and in such a short time too. Yeah guys, you see that, you, you see, you see the differences, right? I see all of them. So moments like these make all the hard work worth it. Definitely. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the right mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Oh, no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. We are only about halfway done, but the only satisfaction the client face is enough for me to push through. Let's face it, in between my expression at Mr. Wright's antics and her, I've been burning the candles at both ends. I can't even close my eyes without seeing a dead girl's face. Dead girl, dead. She's dead. I have to keep knowing myself dead, burying my feelings as deep as they buried her body six feet under. I shouldn't wait so much time on someone who's supposed to be gone. I waste so many years thinking about her already. There should be no need to bother myself with that, when I should be bothering myself with the living. To bet the living are usually as complicated, if not more, than ghosts of the past. But don't you have a party? Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. Alright, he's not around is what you actually mean, right? That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems, and he's just trying to cheer him up. What I said. It's even more complicated when the living in Western is in pair. A pair of rich and famous societies way past their honeymoon phase. And I've been somehow roped into being a relationship counselor. They've been married for a long time, and they've hit a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. Mm. But, if the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. 
See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. Why she thinks a single woman like me would be the best source of relationship advice is beyond me. I mean, technically, no matter how you look at it. Surprisingly, the people who are single give the best advices about relationships. You know why? Because they think and usually people who are in a relationship, basically just because they are in one, think they know everything about it. That's why they suck at giving advices most of the times. And you know, the single ones like that spark that like gives them the proper answers or something like that. Whatever, whatever. Still, I think uh, I talk an answer to the best of my abilities. Without realizing it, I'm already pouring out the part of me that I had thought were long gone. I like to believe my words would be of some help to this ride. Mrs. Rod. If I was this uh, of some help to me, like some wave had been taken off my shoulders. Lorraine. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. The wave of what happened to her hasn't left me yet, did it? Maybe. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy! You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> she doesn't know yet. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. Maybe it's about time I change that. We'll see. So, if Foy can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Retards. So I shouldn't well do that, I shouldn't just closely forget about them too. Saying that I have work left to do is an easy enough excuse to make. I know how other people see me. They see me as someone so upset with her job that she would so easily miss things like a party for it. Outside the parlor, people hurry about here and there in preparation for the Ryan's Grand Housewarming Party. Now, spare me glance, I slip past them, each working on their appointed roles and not daring to slack off while they work for what's probably the most powerful couple in Lightburn. Oh shit, why would you go there? I make it into the kitchen with ease, the wine cellar being my final destination. Please don't do this to me! It's almost 4 a.m., damn it! But when is a great task very simple? Probably never. But this is a great task, isn't it? My greatest one yet that is worth being called a quest. I'm not acting as Marion McCall, the professional interior designer, when I choose to lie about being too busy for a party. I'm Marion McCall, a lawful, neutral cleric with 9 points in wisdom and 8 in charisma. 9 out of how many? 8 out of how many? Just think of it like that makes it a bit cheesy, but it helps with the fear. It helps overcome the insane thought that I'm actively seeking out something that has been plaguing me for years. I might face my worst nightmare, or I might see nothing and find myself imagining Grand Quest full flop. And who would have found that the gate but my final quest would be someone I thought would be my available ally? Snell, hurry up you snails! We are on a deadline and you are wasting my time! The butler comes from the cellar and the kitchen, tailed by a couple of others, people who I assume are most likely chefs and bartenders. Here is Brow, seeing me just stand there by the hatch, by the trapdoor. It almost looks like he's going to throw me out of her being in the kitchen without permission. But then, the emotions for the others disperse and familiarize themselves with their surroundings. Meanwhile, he continues to stand there, preventing entry into the darkness beyond. What are you doing here, Fraulein? This is not the place for guests or in an architect right now. I request you leave. I was just looking around for any last-minute things, yes? 
Yes, you have been doing that a lot. Looking around, snooping about. Now is not the time for such things. If you're not careful, people might think you are up to something. The look he gives me as he says this is almost chilling. If life was a game, we could probably be the true neutral warlock guarding the treasure room. A difficult event to bait with 9 points in wisdom and anything dexterity. Wait. It wasn't dexterity before. Where is it? Charisma. It was charisma, not dexterity. Well, I'm not done yet. I actually need to go into the wine cellar. Just need a quick go at the place. So, just don't mind me. I I'll be out of your hair soon enough. Go outside. Enjoy the party. Bask in the praise and adulation they will no doubt shower you with when the madam speaks highly of you. Surely you've had enough of this stuffy old kitchen by now. You do not want to cause trouble. Both the Bratwurst and Hannah want this to be perfect. It would be a disservice and a disrespect to <laughs> tow out of line and risk it being anything otherwise. And more importantly, I will be blamed for any failure that happens tonight. His intervention almost turns me away. Maybe the sign I'm not meant to seek Lorraine out. But... Please, I just... Uh, lost something the last time I was down there. It's really important. Fifteen minutes. Nine. Ten minutes. Any longer and I'll pull you out of there myself. The Bratwurst would be furious if he thinks anyone is touching his precious vine without his permission. <laughs> Brat. Uh... Thank you. This seriously means a lot. You know what I regret the most? The fact that there is no Johannes route. Like, god damn it, I would so love to do that. I mean, I would go super offensive for Luke. Like, I would constantly say something like that. Anyway, he steps aside begrudgingly. At this point, it looks like there's no turning back. Or, you know, you could just not go there. God damn it. The cellar grazed me ominously as I descend. The space feels smaller, with a lot more bottles lining the wall compared to before, and knowing what might be waiting for me here makes the things worse. Why would you even go there? I almost hope, in a more pretend sense, that Lorraine would just be standing there waiting for me. Yes. It would be just like her to joke about the inappropriate meeting in dark, secluded areas. But just like the broken bottles and wine that was spilled on the ground before, no trace of her can be found. Lorraine! Where are you, Lorraine? I, I I miss you, you know? Say what? For real? Only silence replies. Wait, you like to be be you like being haunted? My god. What is wrong with this woman? Funny that when you want to find something, that's the time when you can't. The thought that I would be able to see Lorraine one last time fills me with such despair. Sure, it was crazy to come here willingly in the first place, but now all I'm really looking for is closure. And if I can see her, please. The least I can do is offer her a prayer. Say what? Wait, say so what? But, but why? Okay, the only... The only thing I still am not sure what the hell is going on is... Why would she go there? <laughs> but whatever, only better tears I need in the middle of the dark. Down point cellar and put my hands together in prayer. May God grant her eternal rest in And that's when she appears. <laughs> I know. That is when her laughter fills the air. God damn it. It rings along the walls until it echoes in my head. And like a siren song, it draws me before it comes to a stop upon reaching a dead end. Ooh. Could it be an adventure then? A secret passage? There must be a hidden switch somewhere. Uh oh. Go look! This is the most interesting thing you've done by far! Uh uh. A secret entrance. Oh, good idea in and all of itself is inane. It's insane for. Only makes this entire endeavor even more produced. I need to find a way to open it. 
Alright, I'm running my hands against the wall in order to find some sort of hidden switch. You didn't give when I tried to push before. Open before, and I doubt that would have changed anytime soon. But if there's a door, there's always a way to open it. Hopefully, without the need to break it down. A shame I can't roll for perception checks in real life. It's such a sweet thing to say out loud. For there is no amusement on my face, and I do check glancing at the mirror from the study. Though a sanity check would be more fitting right now, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. I mean, how long have I been down here, searching for the switch of hidden door? In order to go find the dagger, no less. It isn't only unreasonable, it's insane! Yeah, it is! At this point, they'll find me clawing at the walls, using my nails to try and see if there are any groves or catches I might have missed. I'm surprised I haven't gone past the 10 minutes that was given to me and that I'm not being hauled out of here. I don't want to bang on the chance that I have more time, although I know it's... Uh, I really shouldn't let these kinds of things bother me too much right now. If I don't continue looking, there's no point in me going down here. There are 10 rocks stick underneath my fingers, my search, but... There! A section of the wall, about the size of my palm and just as well hidden as the hollow wall is... A switch or but rather face it tigress you've just hit the jackpot now have you for the excitement i feel that discovery field finds me pressing without a second thought but when i click i close in the shutter and the hidden door clicks open i stop oh shit all right links am i crazy enough to go there I mean, it's cool that it opened, but, you know, I'm still at the worried to go there. Alright, risk it for the biscuit. I regret this already. No time like the present, eh? I to hurry end. I turn around when there is a crash. In my hustle, I bump the mirror. My kid fall to the ground and shatter into a hundred pieces. And shit, I hope that isn't an original piece. I don't think my insurance will be able to cover it. I can probably find an imitation to place that. Are you kidding me? Alright, time to load the safe! The door slams shut behind me and I nearly have a heart attack because of it. But when I see a much more visible lever on this side, I calm down and shake my head. On the other side is a passageway, an underground tunnel that has me mystified for a mere moment until I realize what it holds. Cells closed up by heavy iron bars line the sides. A general sense of death and decay lingers heavy, for the year should have taken away most, if not all, of the stench, of the false smell of humans and corpses alike being left throughout. The breeze most likely coming from the other end of the passage that goes through is to thank for that. If the place had been closed like a mouse with you, I imagine the odor would be fuller than it is now. Dear Lord and Saint Adelaide, bless these poor souls. <laughs> I would say you should be running fast from there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. For the architecture of their time was magnificent, human rights wasn't exactly a big thing back then. And if the Emma Gargle mansion had a place like this hidden away, who knows what sort of heinous songs were done down here. There is no time to dwell on this further, for. Not when. Oh, fuck. A ghastly thing, a coarse woman leans on the wall. Her arms and limbs almost every inch of her limp body is covered with wounds and rotting flesh. And it is then that the putrid smell of blood and gore hits me, making it so that I don't even question how I missed it in the first place. How long has this been here? Oh, that smell! Oh, you're a nasty one, aren't you? I still enjoy the thing twitches. 
And now, as soon as Topaz dies and looks at me with a smile, there's nothing on my mind but horror. I drank the run. I try to keep on running, no matter how much my legs and feet scream at me to stop. I keep going even when I look back and it's nothing of her anymore because I can still hear her. The scrambling of her feet, the words she tries to form with her bloody mouth and the painful sounds of bones grinning against each other as she moves closer and closer to me. <sighs> how long are these damn tunnels? There is a split second for where I know that thing is right behind me, a strange sensation creeping over my lips when her presence looms over me. And then suddenly... I can't even do anything before I'm young and by the hair and pulled back. Still, I struggle uh, until I'm thrown to the side like some ragdoll. I hit the ground with my side and the mush, musty smell of old hay that reaches me is my only indication that I'm still alive. Please don't hurt me! My body hurts and I keep my eyes shut tight, afraid of what might happen next. What's wrong, Marianne? Are you really afraid of little old me? Say what? It's a flesh hope she can help me save me from that thing. But I say here's my the same one that I think hey, I know that that this isn't Lorraine. I'm a fool to think so in the first place. It never could have been her to begin with. The real Lorraine is dead. She looms over me, bugs me in the cell that I was thrown in. What are you? <laughs> Lorraine turns and shifts into that thing from before. And with the same gruesome green, it takes the soap forward towards the cell. Towards me. I barely scrum to my knees when the door of the cell slams shut and it just stands there staring. Shouts for help ring out in the tunnels. But none of them are coming from me. I'm more paralyzed and shocked by what is happening. My throat tightens and being fooled by the image of the rain and the thought of being trapped down here. So then, where? Current cell, a just camera comes flooding into life, and a video has played back on the screen. It was hard to even consider paying attention to it when my life is on the line. But when the ghost doesn't move and the teenager smoking shouts of help may fill the cell, I just had to watch. And what I have seen students judging by the recent Goret universe. They were holding. That letter. And that thing, the woman, she. Getting ridiculous. Desperate to deal with her painful past, Marianne McCall excused herself from attending the house of a party search for Emily Rain Dimension. When Brussels she stumbled upon an underground prison hidden in the best corners. I should have not entered that place. Alright. Mm. I'm way too curious right now. Wait, why did I get my minus points here? Never. Right, Rebecca. Yes, we will be continuing with you from the next episode, so let's end it with a little description. Rebecca Gates, birthday April 1st, RES, 29 years old. Height 5.5, uh, 165 centimeters. That's nice, Have. Alright, so you are like third tallest. Or second shortest. Occupation history teacher, nationality Scottish, religion atheist, raised care, education, master's degree in education, major in European history, likes, stories, that's not really a lot of speaking, about what kind of stories, reading in the library, so I guess reading in other places is, I you know, going to the gym, 
cycling and jogging. Alright, I guess on that we will get along. Lacrosse, not really. Lesson plans. What? Anyway, all those Scottish since she grew up in Luxburn and even went to school in San Goretti. Alright, that school has something to do with all of that as well. Her parents were professors of European history and Southeast Asian history at Luxburg University. They were often busy and that forced Rebecca to be independent early on. Surrounded by books and instilled with a love for learning, she was a star pupil and was often called a teacher's pet for it. Her passion for academics, leading to current day history, was to be expected of her. She came out of Shelley her high school years and started becoming the spitfire she is now. Before then, Ashton was her only friend, for she found him aggravating at first. Independent and used to taking care of her others, it was no surprise when she helped uh, out the young foreigner who moves in next door. Alright. So, I know what happens when we go other way, and uh, that's not on the video because, well, in the end, I, I, I'm glad I went with the option to enter that room. I mean, like, it was less bad than if we didn't enter, and so on. So, surprisingly, yeah. Anywho, let's end the episode, and we'll go with... Uh, Rebecca's story over here, this Rebecca girl, uh, in the next one. Somehow we need to do it so her relationship points with Isabella and Ashton go up as well. This is very important. I need to raise it because... Well, because obviously it annoys me. They are not above like the starting area. And yeah, anywho, see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye.